I believe my dad was born in Crystal City and moved to Uvalde as a young man. So the hill country is reflected in a lot of his work. His mother saw that he was talented and so she did not discourage him. His dad died when he was about uh, 11 or 12, so his dad was out of the picture. And his mother just raised three sons and I think she encouraged them to do what they wanted to do. But he started at UT, University of Texas, then the war started, then did his wartime thing and then went to Chicago Art Institute on the GI Bill. But then he moved to Corpus Christi and that changed a lot. He came home at Thanksgiving. He looked up at me and I looked down at him and it was love at first sight. There was uh, friends of, that told me about the family and she said uh, that she had three sons, that one had been killed in the war, one was married, and the other one was this crazy artist and, I, that, I, and that I wouldn't like him. <laughs> Famous last words. As a kid, I would always see him like right in that room, every day, standing, never sitting. Right in that room for about 40 years. So I remember bringing my girlfriends over and we were like, wow, you know, how long can your dad stand and do that? Yeah. When my mother, along with her friends, started the upstairs gallery on Center Street, he uh, showed some of his work there and uh, taught some uh, classes there. He continued to be part of the gallery and uh, loved to come down here and uh, chat and he loved to talk about art and uh, um, it was always a good conversation. I think he was very systematic the way he went about pursuing the career of an artist. He had a dealer named Mary Nye who uh, really sold a lot of his work, a lot of it uh, corporate work, uh, to corporations. I think when you paint you're a combination of about 60 different things. Uh, you have to be a philosopher and a psychologist and a salesman and, a, and everything all rolled into one. What you finally become depends on your personality. That's what makes it so wonderful. You know, this painting of yours uh, up here, the boy uh, cutting out paper, especially struck home to me because I can remember when I was about that age that I assumed that very position and it was so comfortable to rest my head on the knee. I. Uh, didn't try to copy him exactly, but I, I sketched a quick sketch. Uh, the idea occurred to me that it would make a, an excellent uh, subject for a piece of sculpture. But since I wasn't a sculptor, <laughs> I just made a sketch and then later on did the painting from the sketch. So that uh, it's not really my son, it's any little boy about right. the age. Well, I would classify him as a 20th century contemporary artist. Uh, he was deeply influenced by the French Impressionist, uh, Marisot and Gauguin and all those guys. I think you see some t uh, 20th century influences on him. Uh, uh, some of his work that I've seen in his collection even has a kind of cubist feel to it. One of the things that strikes me is that a lot of his work, like this piece here, uh, seems to be from an aerial perspective. So I think he was influenced by the rise of aviation in Texas. There's a painting over here that definitely looked like it's from an airplane. And then he pursued color, so he would paint the same subject in numerous colorways. So I think that was probably his, the theme of his career, I think, was color. I remember when Steve was in the hospital, he was saying, what should I paint when I get out? And I said, flowers. <laughs> There's many kinds of artists there are people, and you'll surely find something you like if you look long enough. 